to do is do a blur. What do I mean by that? New adjustment layer. We're going to call it blur. And the idea of that is that you create virtual depth of field, and people are like, oh, that's not color correcting. Well, it is, because how you color stuff depends on how in focus it is. Um, so I'm going to generate. Generate what am I playing at today? Blur. I'm going to do a box blur. Like that. Repeat edge pixels. And pen tool, shelf, the layer. And spend your time. Go on the inside of the object. I'll show you why in a sec. Um, well, the reason why is because you're going to feather this like a bitch and you need some grounds to work on. Because he ain't your friend. Um, turn on the blur. Um, M. Subtract. F. Bring up the feathering. And we're going to press MM. And increase the expansion. Badass. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, this takes like a shitloads of um, camera tracking to get this work properly. But now it actually looks filmic. Now, depth of field is the number one thing that creates a filmic look. Um, people may not think so, but it does. Um, what I also want to do is I'm going to call this one um, clothes. Now, obviously this takes a long time but this is how it's done now this isn't the software that professionals would ne necessarily use for um, color correction however it is the same technique and when you're in a professional environment it isn't about oh what software are you using well it is because you need to know what soft how to use the software they're using but it's also quite a lot about how good you are at the techniques. I mean, if you can get it done, no one cares if you're using software called My Granddad Has Hairy something. Whatever you think I was about to say, write it in the comments box, and if you're right, you win something. How about that? So we've got clothes, they're all isolated now. We're going to go effect, color correction, tint. Now, obviously, you do more you might do more stuff to the clothes but the idea is that I wanted to decrease the saturation of the clothes like that um, before after it was mainly that shirt it was just too blue um, but also the gun is too colorful in my opinion so effect color correction curves not curves oh my god today what am I playing at color correction tint and bring down the tint a bit because it needs some kind of colour. You go 50 looks pretty good. Um, and as you can see, you just work your way hacking it down. Um, I think in this blur, I could also affect colour correction, tint. What I'm going to do is do it subtly, just subtly desaturate that. Um, so the scene, what we're going to do for the scene, well there's a few things that will help boost the image and that is first of all colour correction um, we're going to go gamma pedestal gain, now this looks complicated but it's really not um, the idea is that the black stretch will just increase the darkness um, in fact we're not even going to go into that <laughs> effect, colour correction and here's one that I like to start off with and that is photo filter. This is really underused but very quickly you can create either a warm effect or a cooling effect. Um, I'm going to go with the um, warming filter 81 um, you can increase the density like how overly ridiculously yellow it is um, I'm just going to set it to like 31, looks pretty cool. Um, now that it's yellow, you can still like um, desaturate it 
because even though you wanted it tint um, yellow, you might want it to be less yellow but more toned. Does that make sense to you? I hope so. Um, so there we go. Um, what else can we do? What else do I do? I sharpen it. Like I know sometimes, like if I zoom in here, sharpness can kill something. But it's honestly worth it. As long as you don't go over 50, you're okay. I mean, even that's pushing it. But look, you wouldn't think there's anything too wrong with that. Um, but that's before really blurred, after much more definition. And when you zoom out, it looks a lot cooler. Effect, color correction, want some overall levels of the whole scene. Um, so boost the whites crush some of the blacks like that beautiful okay right so this is looking pretty good I mean if it, like you might think oh that doesn't look the best but let's compare it to what we started with Okay, so we started with that, and now we've got this, which obviously looks much more filmic, much better. And the idea is that all these elements that we've singled out then apply to the whole shot. Um, I mean, color correction, creating a scene feel, is not just about color correction. There's lots of things you can do. Um, I always actually like to add noise. Um, I think it looks quite cool if you're doing like a cool effect. Um, turn off use colour noise because then you start getting greens in red places and set it to like 2 or something weak but for this I'll set it to like 4 and that looks pretty cool um, what else? Um, going to layer new solid um, we're going to call this flare because if you look there's actually an awful lot of um, light coming from is it up there um, so we're going to add the bottom end of a lens flare I'm very pleased with this thank you so much video copilot I love your stuff um, and we're just going to very quickly add a preset warm lens flare let's go preset browser natural flares concert gold and even that looks pretty cool um, let's hit ok and like you can't actually see much of it but that is just adding to the effect of it, like that's without and with. It looks pretty cool. Um, so that's the basic technique of advanced color correcting. Obviously, it's a lot easier to do in a program such as um, Apple Color. Um, however, it can be done in After Effects, and the great thing is that you've got Adobe Dynamic Link, so you can color correct your stuff in that. Um, you want to do a lot more mo um, tracking and if you haven't got a still object like you can track the face because it's pretty symmetrical however if you've got arms and stuff what you're going to have to start doing is pen tooling every frame um, and that can take a while um, obviously uh, but it has to be done and someone's got to do it whether they like it or not someone's got to do it so I hope this helped um, yes, it was a little long-winded. Yes, it did go terribly wrong at one point. But the idea is that now you know how advanced color correcting is done. Now you can apply it to your project if you have ludicrous amounts of spare time. And now you may explore. Just seriously, if you've got some time, get some footage, record something, and just go through. And just literally just choose every single one of these and learn what they do because there'll be some hidden stuff in there that you don't even know about. And you'll be like, what, that's been there all along? And they'll be like, yeah. 
So thank you very much, and I'll see you guys soon.